Welcome to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, and this is our last week at the Lake Sunapee Region Chamber of Commerce, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 9 a.m., Ashley is on the WNTK 99.7 with Matt for a program called Day Trip Destinations, where they discuss retail, restaurants, lodging, and nonprofit organizations from our coverage area. Today, we'll hear from Ty Morris, who will tell us about the Young Professionals Organization and their activities. Levi Southworth will tell us about car nights at the Refinery Restaurant. We'll hear from Catherine Nevins about the free books and author visit to Simons Elementary School. And we'll close with the Kearsarge Neighborhood Partners to hear about their efforts. But first, a few words from one of the underwriters that make your Yankee Chronicle possible. Please stay with us. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em. Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. We are strong and we'll get through this together, but these are stressful times. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, and know that you are not alone. Visit wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from the Lake Sunapee Region Chamber of Commerce right here on Main Street in New London. And I'm now joined by Ty Morris, a real estate professional with Coldwell Banker Lifestyles. And we're talking about the Lake Sunapee Region Young Professionals Network. I think I got it all. You did, that was a mouthful, <laughs> nice job. Ty, this is a really great organization. You're part of the chamber, which is uh, why we're here. This mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense, but talk about Young Professionals Network. And I think one thing we always kind of joke about when we talk to you is what does young specify? Totally. Uh, because people out there are gonna say, oh, well, I'm young at heart, mm -hmm. like, is there an age range? <laughs> yeah, well, first, thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. Good. So uh, first off, that concept of young professionals as a definition was one of my hesitations in, in joining the group initially, that was about four years ago, um, because I had a hard time getting over that definition, but what we really think of is it's more of a concept. Yeah. Um, do you consider yourself young? It's not a question that you need to be asking yourself, <laughs> okay. but it's a concept of it's younger, um, difference makers in the area, business leaders. Um, we have a lot of um, um, self-employed individuals as well as just employees that are just skyrocketing through uh, the quote unquote corporate chains here. So for them to be a part of the group, it's really beneficial for maybe younger yeah. um, um, professionals to come and just learn a little bit and, and sponge and leech off of the resources that we have within our group. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was part of the committee a few years ago, we had a, a gentleman in town who, who is older and he and we were all young compared to him. And he would say, I just really like the activities that you guys are mm -hmm. doing. So it could be something like you just want to come to the coffee hour, which yeah. we'll talk about because I it works for my schedule. Schedule. I really want to come and just have a, a, a more relaxed conversation about the professional world. So I think that can really uh, tail to people too, is come because it's something that you want to be a part yeah. of. Yeah. 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 And essentially it's really low key. Uh, we really yeah. work in two facets. The first one is being a, a group that um, empowers and supports uh, the, the local young professionals. Sure. And that's a big part of our coffee hour, usually held at grounds Great. here on Main Street, New London. Um, it's an opportunity for us to get together and just talk about what's going on in our professional lives, what's going on in our personal lives, how do they connect and how can we help each other through these um, these times. Uh, the struggle is real out yeah. there. Uh, <laughs> we're all really super busy, but the thing that sort of sets us 
um, individually and together is our passion and our ambition to yeah. succeed. Well, and I think it's another thing too to remember, we are the future of the town, the mm -hmm. area of which uh, the professional world stands, businesses locally. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a good thing to kind of stick together and, uh, and be a part of a, a wonderful network. Mm -hmm. Somebody out there watching who says, I want to try this out. So the best thing to do would be someone come check out the coffee hour from 10 to 11 at Grounds. Yes. And come in, it's low key. I think that's an important part to mention too. It is. Again, yeah. we're, we're, as our mission, we're facilitating um, the growth and we're helping to empower each other. And that's really what those meetings are about. Fantastic. Yeah. Then someone joins the committee. What is the process? I mean, compared to the chamber, which we talk about, you know, you come and you pay a fee and you mm -hmm. get all this. What What's the difference between that and uh, Young Professionals yeah, Network? Yeah, gosh, there, there's no obligation, no sure. stress, no worries. Um, come be prepared to either speak your mind and, and share your ideas or just come to listen and get to know um, those that are a part of this group. Um, but no fees, again, no obligations. Yes, we love that. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to the future. Anything fun you have planned? Yeah, well, this summer we're all super busy with our own things. What, what you might see is that you don't see a lot of like the young professional organization out there. Sure. But I can guarantee that you see the young professionals out there yeah. being a part of their communities, helping sponsor their own organizations while also helping to support others. This fall, though, as previously mentioned, the other facet to what we're doing or trying to do and accomplish is to host networking events. So to be determined, but we're really excited for a fall networking event to be held locally. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. For people interested in more information, check out the Facebook page. Facebook page, that's what we got. Love it. That's yeah. a perfect, that's where young people are. So it makes I think a lot so. of sense. Yeah. yeah. Ty Morris, really great to hear all about the Lake Sunfee Region Young Professionals Thanks, Network. Abby. Thanks for joining me. When we return, we'll hear about car nights coming to the refinery restaurant in Andover. But first, these words from good folks that make our communities the great places they are, the businesses that support us, and the organizations you know and love. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for youth. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals into your body. And nicotine, which can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. This program is supported by H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service and maintenance of all types of oil, gas and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems and backup generators. Their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Welcome back to Your Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Last year, we met with Levi Southworth at the Refinery Restaurant as he introduced us to Car Night. Let's hear about it. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from the Refinery Restaurant here in Andover. And I'm now joined by Levi Southworth of Ricky's Cruisin'. Hi, Levi. How you doing? Thanks for uh, chatting with us about these cool cars that you have as part of cruise night here at the Refinery. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about how this got started. And obviously, you have a passion for cars. <laughs> I do have a passion for cars. Uh, I have a 53 Buick Super, and that car used to be belong to my father. Cool. And I took possession of it and just started a cruise in. We're not part of a club or anything. And like-minded people come in and look at cars. That's so what, it. if someone's watching and they say, I like cars, but I don't own a fancy car or doesn't a cool matter. car, doesn't matter. Does come on matter. down to the yeah. refinery and check them out. That's it. 
Cool. Yep. And what if you have a cool car and want to bring it? Uh, you have a cool car and want to bring it, we're on Wednesdays here at the refinery and all you do is show up. It's There's no registration fee, I give you a ticket, you get whatever food deals they're going to have, you park and you listen to good music and look at cars. Cool. And the other thing that Brian and I were talking about is it doesn't necessarily mean antique cars. It would be any car that someone wants to show. Uh, 25 years and older. Okay. Good that, to know. that is what considers a car to be an antique. Interesting. I'm yep. learning something new. So the way I run the show though is 25 years or older or over 500 horsepower because there's nothing wrong with any car or truck like that. Okay, cool. So if you have a sports car or something yep. fancy, bring it in. Yep. Even if it's brand new. Even if right it's brand new. Lot. That's okay, right. Okay, very cool. And what's the start? Why did you start this? What was the drive behind uh, Ricky's Cruising? Uh, I just wanted to get people, like-minded people, together. There wasn't a car show in this town, mm -hmm. um, and I had the time to do it. It's a good way to spend my evenings and. That's it. I love driving that car. I bet so you do. Yep. And you're always probably looked at while driving that car too, pointing and things like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if people want to know more information, you have started a Facebook page that you're active on, and that's a chance for people to get information. They can get everything they need to get there. Oh, great. And that uh, information, if they're on the Facebook page, then they can get other information about other car shows uh, in New England, really, and then really locally here too. Yeah, that's what you were saying before we got started. There are a lot of local car shows, not necessarily in Andover, but in New Hampshire that people can attend. Everywhere in New England, yep. yep. And you may be there. I may be there. <laughs> Which is awesome. Yeah. Right in this area and a lot of areas through really all three states, and that's Vermont, New, ha New Hampshire, and Maine. Cool. Uh, right within 15 miles of Andover, you can hit a show every night of the week. Wow. Uh, Mondays in Hill, New Hampshire, which is off of 3A north of, uh, northwest of Franklin. Okay. They're on Monday nights. I believe they start at 5. Uh, great hot sausage sandwiches. Ooh. They dress uh, kids up as little bebop, doo-wop servers Fun. with the little bow ties, so you can go there. Uh, Tuesday nights at Arnie's in Concord. Fun. Wednesdays, Tilton Diner. Okay. Or you should come here to the refinery. Absolutely. All right. For coming here. Yep. <laughs> Thursdays, Route 104 Diner off of exit 23 on 93. Uh, and then Fridays, you end up in Bristol. Bristol's the largest show. It's at the Village Pizza in Bristol. Uh, you can look that up for a reference. And it's right south of the lake. And you can see 100 cars there. I particularly like that you can come see cars, and then all these places sounds like you could get a really good meal and some ice cream too. If you <laughs> as, as important as it is to look at a car, you got to be fed. Yeah, so <laughs> that's important. It everywhere keeps people cruising, it yeah. keeps people coming in. Right, everywhere you're gonna go, there's gonna be food. Just be careful on a hot July night, licking an ice cream too close to a there you go. car. That's there you all go. I'll say. I don't know from experience, but I would think. <laughs> there you I, go. Yeah, great. So to have people check out your uh, Facebook page. Also good for weather delays. You wouldn't have a cruise at night if there was rain. Right, yeah, and you, in, unless it's been, uh, you know, like three days of rain and we're expecting to be on the fourth day, sure. uh, you'd have to just check that day. And sure. usually within a couple hours, because nobody wants to drive in the rain yes. or leave in the rain, although we can't control what happens after we start. But sure. if it's raining before the show is going to start that day, we're probably not going to have it. Really cool. So everyone should come and check out the cruise at nights on Wednesday nights here at the refinery, five to eight. Five to eight. Five to eight, really great. Levi, nice to meet you. Nice Thanks to meet you for too. telling us about it. Sure. When we return, we'll hear from Catherine Nevins about the free books and author visit to Simons Elementary School in Warner. First, a word from another one of our underwriters. Please stay with us. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how, and we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids need to know the dangers and how to avoid them. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal, so talk with your kids, because when you talk, they hear you. 
you take your car in for an oil change, a good mechanic will also take care of other routine maintenance to make sure your car runs safely and efficiently. Protecting your health isn't much different. When you get a COVID-19 vaccine, it's important to make sure you're also protected from other serious but preventable diseases. It's easy and convenient to get other routine vaccines at the same time as a COVID-19 vaccine. So make sure you ask a healthcare professional about other vaccines you may need to maintain your health. This program is supported by Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997, with roots going back much further as the Country Press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsard Shopper. Echo Communications. Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle, I'm Abby Peel. Warner has a unique program of providing students with free books, including a visit from its author. Let's hear about this year's title from Katherine Nevins. Thank you, Abby. I am here today to talk about something really special and really close to my heart. It has to do with the Main Street Warner Literacy Project. I am part of Main Street Warner Inc., which is the nonprofit uh, founded in 2000 here in Warner. And one of the things that we do every year, in fact, we've done it since 2005, so this is our 19th year, is we track down amazing and wonderful New England authors or illustrators for children's books. What happens is that once a year, this author or illustrator is brought in under the Main Street Warner Literacy Project, and they visit Simons Elementary. And during that one day, all of the students get to meet the author or the illustrator. They have an opportunity to talk about the creative process. He was a wild child. <laughs> he would get up in the morning and say, how can I cause some trouble today? And he would always like do stuff that he shouldn't do. What kind of readers they were as children, what made them write, what made them draw, what, how, how they put a book together. It's up to the, uh, to the artist or the author what they talk about. But it's a very, very big day. It's always, we, we've always hold, held it in May. I want to tell you we've had some amazing authors over the years. We've had MacArthur Fellow David Carroll. We've had David Elliott right here in Warner. Jack Noon, Maxine Cuman came to the, to the school. The Caldecott Award winner Beth Cromus. Last year we had Matt Farris Essenwine. And this year we're really, really excited because we have a very well-known children's author named Ralph Fletcher. Ralph Fletcher has not only done amazing children's books, he's also taught teachers how to teach children how to write. And that's really how he's known throughout the school system around here as the guy who taught teachers how to teach writing. So he has done Twilight Comes Twice, beautiful, beautiful children's book that's become a bit of a classic over the years. He has done Hello, Harvest, Harvest Moon. This is another beautiful children's book, beautiful, beautiful writing. He's written for young adults. His probably most famous one is called Fig Pudding. But this year, he's coming to Simons Elementary School to present this book, The World's Loneliest Elephant. And what happens is that each child in the school receives an autographed copy of this book after meeting with him. So they meet with him, they talk about the book, and each child goes home with a copy of the book. This is a wonderful, wonderful story based on a true story about an elephant named Kavan who started off in Pakistan and was quite abused. And then a wonderful veterinarian and a whole group of people came together to save this elephant, move them to Cambodia, move the elephant to Cambodia, and it's a beautifully illustrated, beautiful, beautiful story with a lot of uh, talking about a lot of courage and a lot of integrity. We're very excited about this book being the one presented to all the children. This happens every year by a combination of a lot of folks and a lot of organizations coming together. There's the SAU that helps, there's the Simons PTO that helps, there's Main Street Bookends that contributes, there's um, the Men's Club over the years has contributed, local families contribute to this happening as well as the Nancy Sibley Wilkins Fund. 
So this is a, a very much a community effort to have this happen once a year. And we're super, super proud to have Ralph Fletcher be our author and presenter this year. So the children on May 8th had the amazing experience of meeting this man, talking with him, going home with this book. Afterwards, they got to come out back here to the bookstore where uh, Mr. Fletcher could personalize the books to them. And many, many other people came just so they could meet Ralph Fletcher and perhaps buy some of his books. So um, this is something we're really proud of, Main Street Warner Literacy Project, every year. You can find out more about it if you go to our website. We look forward to who we might find next year. If you like to read, you have to appreciate what Warner is doing to inspire reading in their students. When your Yankee Chronicle returns, we'll continue to learn more about Kearsarge Neighborhood Partners. We'll be right back. points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. In every family, small conversations can make a big impact. I grew up on tour with my parents. Kind of different, but we bonded over music and we talked. Honest conversations, like when my dad shared his experiences as an alcoholic. Your honesty gave me a sense of integrity that I wanted in my own life. And I wanted you to know from someone who's been in recovery more than 30 years now, that hard work is what creates success, not alcohol or other drugs. In whatever you do, talk, they hear you. This program is supported by The Innertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge, Sunapee, Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Innertown Record. Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel. Last week, Cindy Johnson and Nancy Allenby introduced us to the Kearsarge Neighborhood Partners. This week, we'll hear more about how you can be involved. Hi, ladies. Well, Kearsarge Neighborhood Partners was born out of a concern that community members had for our neighbors in need. And so our hope in um, forming this group of individuals was that we could um, address these needs by connecting, by connecting them with the community, by connecting them with each other, um, so that we would build this web of support and be able to lift them from this state of insecurity and instability. Also recognizing that one of the particular organizations that we were, um, that we were associated with and working with, which is uh, CREM, Kearsarge Reg Regional Ecumenical Ministries was um, was coming uh, was was experiencing individuals coming back to them on an ongoing basis, and I think that that's what concerned us is that oftentimes these crises that are being addressed and met are only um, the, either the tip of the iceberg or in some ways they're not really meeting the bedrock issues that these these individuals are facing. One of the things that makes Kearsarge Neighborhood Partners really special is our principles. We started out um, realizing that when some of the relief organizations were helping individuals with a need, uh, they were able to give them some financial help, able to solve some of the issues. But what we were trying to design was a way to walk with people and to have an individual relationship with people. Um, and to help them move out of crisis by supporting them, possibly on a longer term basis. So by not doing for them and trying to empower them, we tell them we will walk beside you for as long as you want or as long as you need. And um, one of the last values that we really um, are in tune to is the value of reciprocity. So as people move towards wholeness and towards stability, we look for opportunities for them to become the giver. 
there's three ways that we connect, three levels of connection. The first level of connection is one person to one person, neighbor to neighbor. The second way that we connect is to help neighbors reach an organization or organizations that can help support them. And the third way that we connect is by collaboration, which is organizations collaborating with organizations together helping neighbors. So the simplest form of that connecting is the neighbor to neighbor. And we have something that's called a flash mission, as in mission accomplished. And a flash mission is a single deed that needs to be done on a particular day. It usually has a limit of two to three hours to it, but it could be much briefer than that if necessary. So um, we have decided that, uh, that what, we could, what we could best do to serve some of our neighbors is to, to find volunteers who are willing to walk alongside, who are willing to come up um, and, and be partners with our neighbors in addressing some of these issues. Uh, and um, there are many ways that that has already manifest itself. Um, we will, these, uh, these partners, th these partnerships, we have two uh, uh, KNP coaches that, that always work together with a family or an individual. And they, they will do everything from look at budgets together with these families. <laughs> they, will, um, they will help um, our neighbors find these connections. So an example of, of a collaboration project that we did in the spring when COVID had first reared its ugly head and there were all kinds of food shortages in the grocery stores and, and people were really wondering about food security. Um, we got together with uh, Colby Sawyer College, with Spring Ledge Farm, with um, the Kearsarge Food Hub down at Sweet Beet in Bradford and uh, the New London Hospital and Cure Search Neighborhood Partners, and we formed a collaboration called the Victory Garden Revival. Spring Ledge Farm produced and donated 250 trays of vegetable seedlings. They grew them and donated them. Volunteers got together and bagged up large bags of compost, and some garden gloves and some shovels were donated, and we delivered, our volunteers delivered 250 vegetable trays and supplies to a lot of the essential healthcare workers um, in New London and in Newport, as well as lots of neighbors in the area that we knew might be at risk for food security. And those uh, were monitored over the course of the summer by both Sweet Beet Market and by Colby Sawyer College. And in fact, those two organizations are still donating some of their fall vegetables to our local food pantries. So that was a really good example of how all five of those organizations work together to weave a web of support um, for food stability in our area. Please visit our website. On the home page, there are two main buttons in yellow. The first one is neighbors needing help. If you are a neighbor needing help, if you know of a neighbor needing help, please encourage them to go to our website and click on that button. The other yellow button on that home page is Neighbors Ready to Help. If you would like to see if there's something that you could get involved in with Cure Search Neighborhood Partners, if you click on the Neighbors Ready to Help button, there will be um, a short list of ways that you can get involved and you can simply check off the things that you might be interested in. The third way that you could help is by donating. There is a third yellow button that says donate. We are a 501c3, but basically every single person who's helping with KNP is a volunteer. And, and believe me, people are basically working full time for the organization on a volunteer basis. Um, wonderful group of people. Thank you for all of your efforts. Join us again next week at this same time for another edition of your Who, What, Where, and When show of the Dartmouth Lake Centipede Region, where we visit the LaValle Building Supply Store in their Bristol location. Don't miss our Game of the Week second season as we revisit our games from the past. Our next game is the winter basketball matchup with Boys of Centipede hosting Newmarket. All of our games replay at noon and 7 p.m. on Sundays and Mondays. Check out YCNnow.com for the most up-to-date schedules and on-demand viewing of all of our shows. I'm Abby Peel. Join us again next week at this same time coming to you from LaValle Building Supply as they host Yankee Chronicle. Stay safe, everyone.